somebody out here talking to themselves. Somebody down that way. Let me get through this video, you guys. What's up, rock stars? It's Rocks, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Love and Hip Hop ATL Season 6, the season finale. So let's get to it, shall we? I almost left out this stupid ass treasure and Mariah going to lovely Mimi's um, nail shop. Child, right over there on Old National. One of y'all told me that already. One of the rock stars that didn't told me, and I still was surprised. I mean, it is compl it is right off the 285 on Old National, like across the street from the flea market. I'm surprised that they spend that kind of money on Old National for them expensive ass nails with all them designs and shit on them. But I, child, I guess. But it was stupid. They go in there. I'm not really sure why. Mimi ain't never really saw for neither one of them and vice versa they act like they passed the bullshit but don't nobody believe that they sit down they gonna get a pedicure and then they start arguing about you know mariah mimi telling mariah i mean sierra that mariah's fucking a stupid and they have this whole big blowout i said mimi girl you got your damn business this is your real shit don't fuck it up with these bitches up in your damn shop. Like, this is what I'm talking about. People sell off of these shows. We can't blame Mona when you letting them do it. Don't fuck up your money. Your long-term money. Because she can't be getting paid that much for the first season. Especially since she's been a flop and I don't even know she'll be back next season. But, sure, ain't nobody got time to talk about that shit. They pick up a uh, treasure and carry her out. And it is, it's, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. So we might as well get these frost facts out of the way um, because I know that that is uh, what is on everybody's mind. I've seen the clip of the reunion going around where Rashida has a breakdown and it is a believable breakdown. Um, I'm going to save that discussion for the reunion. However, this whole frost facts, listen, I was really hoping that this shit was fake. As we get closer and closer to the reunion, it feels like maybe there is some truth to this story. And if it is true, then I have lost all respect for Kirk. Okay, now I, it ain't like I had been healed him up in any type type of esteem to begin with. But I just can't even wrap my head around this whole entire situation and everybody's reaction to this whole entire situation. Um, I don't know what to call it, but on the show... We gonna call it false facts <laughs> until we see these damn um, DNA results. But yeah, I guess I don't. I just so the show started where it ended last week, which was with the big blow up. Everybody need to get out of my business. Stop trying to fuck up my family. <laughs> Such an ironic statement coming from a person that slept with a stripper and got her pregnant on his wife that he was currently actively with and their kids like. I don't understand. I mean, I'm guessing he's meaning that, you know, from what they said from the start, this storyline was a surprise to them. They did not know that um, this Jasmine girl who I have, oh, I just, I don't know what's wrong with the women of the world today. You young girls out there, listen, do not model your life after this Jasmine girl because you came in losing. I didn't know how you thought that you was going to win in this situation. You look like a hoe. You look like a home wrecker. I know people say that, you know, women can't wreck homes. Yes, the fuck they can. I know it takes two to tangle, but nigga, you need another person there to do it, right? So, look, I, I just hate that. This whole thing has played out this way. But I can't get my dander all up because, fuck, it still looks like Kirk and Rashida are together. And look, if they like it, I love it. I cannot. I done told you guys this whole fucking season. They can't keep continuing to get my damn blood pressure up. But yeah, D-Lo blows the fuck up and he's all upset and mad that, you know, everybody is trying to figure out what the fuck do these papers mean. Okay, the kids are there. They watching. Okay, even they look disturbed. And I guess that's saying a lot considering the little boy last week was just like, oh, mama, you need to get over it. His daughter comes and gets the kids and tries to take him out of the way. And like Miss Charlene said, I can't understand why he's so fucking mad at Rashida, so mad at Charlene. Anybody but his fucking self. 
Because at the end of the day, you've done it to yourself, D-Lo. But you know, he going on and on. Y'all think this is a joke. Y'all fucking up my family. Everybody need to stay in they lane, you know, fucking face. I ain't never seen him quite this upset, like they said. But still, you was on this show. You've been doing it to your marriage, skating around for six fucking seasons. So I just don't know what he wants us to feel about this whole situation. And later on, back at Pressed... You know, Rashida and Charlene and the stepdaughter, they talking about how mad they've never seen D-Lo like that before. And look, ain't nobody trying to give D-Lo no fucking heart attack either, okay? We would like to see y'all marriage work out. But we also would like to see motherfuckers not fucking strippers and getting them pregnant. I just don't know what else to say about this whole situation. Like I said, I want to save the rest for the reunion. But these separation papers, he gave Rashida everything. Usually when they do that, it's because they're guilty. And they know that they've done wrong. And there ain't even no sense in them trying to fight for it. Because the judge is going to look at the what is the results of your infidelities. In this case, a baby. Nigga, you talking about fucking up your tracks. You can't cover up nothing with a baby. Oh whole living breathing baby it's just it's just sad that if the frost facts is true which i'm still holding out hope that it isn't but if it is true you threw down down the drain your whole and fucking yeah i mean you didn't got caught the fuck up on this show for real anyway they get a letter uh the stepdaughter had got a letter she gives it to rashida you know read this and you know when she starts you know uh i just want to apologize for my role it never was my intentions to hurt you then she finally realizes that it might be from jasmine and you know rashida i don't care what she says i don't never want to talk to her i don't roll like that you a home wrecker okay <sighs> everybody in this situation looks crazy rashida looks the craziest because she sit through this whole fucking season if it is true i mean we can't really put it on rashida it is all on d -Lo. but it's just oh it's just I, I can't even understand these reality shows show do change your perspective people seem to not make the best decisions when it comes to these shows i don't know what happens some say that it's mona but a sad situation nonetheless we're going to see what comes up, but we do find out that uh, Logan is not the daddy. Another thing that's going around in the blogs is the fact that Jocelyn is mad at Mona, hasn't given her her money, says that she owes her $150,000 because um, let Mona and them say it in this episode. Uh, Jocelyn became increasingly and increasingly difficult to work with. She wouldn't show up to do her confessional. She wouldn't answer questions. Okay, she was violent. Uh, this is what Mona and them were saying. So I know that this is going around that Jocelyn is saying that uh, Mona is trying to besmirchify. A shout out to <laughs> Don King. <laughs> that she was trying to, you know, trying to tarnish her name out in these streets. Supposedly, Jocelyn has quit and all that. Listen, we're going to save that for the reunion as well. Um, this shit is all kind of boiling over, but... <sighs> I mean, I get it that Mona is a puppet master. We have called her that the whole entire time. However, people go on these shows willingly. You get caught up in the vehicle and want to be, you know, getting camera time and the stardom, whether it's positive or negative, that comes with the position. Um, you do the shit that you do. At some point, we got to have some sort of value and decorum about ourselves. And we say, you know what? I ain't doing that shit. Like, I can't act that much a fucking fool. I got my mom and my daddy out here looking at me cutting a, f a fool up like this like no but they don't do that because when you look at the bigger bigger picture mona they, you know they prey on people that they have the the, the stars in their eyes they want to be famous but they don't have the avenues to get there it's usually people who don't come from much and this is their one shot at stardom look i don't want to get I, i'm not trying to do all this because i said we was going to save it for the reunion but i'm aware about jocelyn being upset with uh mona and everything it's just i what are we supposed to say he was on the show but getting to stevie and jocelyn he says that everybody is mad at jocelyn and he has not seen his baby the story of their lives even currently to this day he got t-shirts made talking about free bonnie bella <laughs> These motherfuckers are so fucking tiring. We got 18 more fucking years of this, y'all. But whatever, on the show, Jocelyn walks in with Bonnie Bella. 
Hey, Stevie. There goes your dad, dad. You know, to Bonnie Bella. Jocelyn is all funky because of the confrontation that she had with uh, Stevie J's daughter. And I am also aware of the fact that they say that Jocelyn and the daughters have been fine even since she accused Stevie J of molesting Ava. But for the show, supposedly Savannah and Sade turned up and that was supposedly the reason why Jocelyn asked production, did you guys make her do that? Because we've been fine. And that's why Jocelyn was so dumbfounded by this whole, all this shit that was going on. That's what's the word in the streets anyway. So, um, you know, Jocelyn is funky about this. And Stevie says that uh, you acted a goddamn fool. And Jocelyn was just like, because she acted like she wanted to jump. Scary. Like she wanted me to slap that nasty wig up off of her head. Here go the lady that's talking to herself. Oh, that's not her. <laughs> they starting to look alike, child. Stevie says that, you know, she could have handled that like an adult. And she says she could have, you know, but she just told her, like, you can't beat me. I just wanted to remind her of that. Like, why are we going through all of this? But you know what? She finished with all of this. Just to let you know, I am moving to Miami, just like I said. Stevie J was like, that's fine. You just not taking my baby. Hell, you just wanted to get married, come to the house and bring rings the other day. Now, all of a sudden, you're talking about taking my baby and moving down to the end of Florida. Like, what is going on with you? I said, child, I hope the child ain't got postpartum. If it's the editing, they sure are making this girl look crazy. And I don't know if it's the editing. Jocelyn says, yeah, I just said that you need to get rid of enchilada, enchilada, empanada, empala, estrelita. <laughs> <laughs> because she's she needs to be the only artist latina artist on danger zone we're gonna get past the bull and then i'm gonna be the latina artist you're never gonna find somebody else like me the puerto rican princess it's hard for them to come by cbj starts giving her shit you know saying that uh well you know he can't just drop you know empanada enchilada enchilada impala Elevator, Estelita, Estelita, whatever the fuck her name is. And she's just like, come on, 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 Stevie. And nobody got time for all that. I'm about to go to New York. I am going to do promo. You get rid of that bitch. As a matter of fact, you're going to bring her up there with you. Okay, and we'll sit down and we'll have a conversation about the fact that you about to drop her. Because like Jocelyn said, remember, you never going to find another one like Jocelyn. So then later, we see Stevie J. He's having... A danger zone event. He got uh, Sade and Savannah there. Did they not know that this was supposed to be a club scene? <laughs> they showed up looking like they going to the fucking picnic with their jean shorts on and everybody else dressed up in the background. This shit, it was probably 11 o'clock in the goddamn morning. And they were just like, what, what is happening here? Anyway, he sits them down and he tells them he's got a big announcement. And they was like, you better not have Jocelyn here. Because if you do, it's going to be some problems. Okay, but he not saying. Um, he just telling us that him and Jocelyn, they've had some ups. They've had some downs. Now they have a baby together. And, you know, he's going to forever be there for his baby. So nobody got to worry about that. But he can't do it no more with Jocelyn. He will keep her as an artist if she wants to stay. Okay, because they make beautiful music together. But he does want everybody to know that uh, Empanada and a lot of Enchirita, Impala, Elevator, Estelita, Estrelita. <laughs> it's this new Danger Zone Latina artist. Okay. And I don't feel like going into it. She comes walking in. Sade and Savannah are like, oh, she's cute. She can replace the Puerto Rican princess any day. I don't know about all of that. I guess they're determined to try to fix the problem of Jocelyn leaving the show. So maybe they are trying to fill her, fill uh, Jocelyn's shoes with this girl. I don't know. Um, people said it was Tommy as well but Tommy seems to be taking a different route as well so child, I don't know what Mona gonna do but uh, as of now Jocelyn is not coming back she says and then lastly you guys Mama D she's having this housewarming party because she wants to fix Samantha and Tommy's relationship and then we get some old shit that we don't care about you know she's sexually frustrated so you know Miss Deb brings her some some sex toys to try to take care of. I was like, Miss Deb, you want to get in the bed with me? <laughs> I know she's not gay, y'all. Is she? Miss Deb not gay, is she? Y'all don't follow her, so I don't know what her man's situation is. Anyway, so she give her some shit, whatever. The main reason why we here is Tommy and Samantha. Now, Tommy 
and Tammy are on their way to this party. And they're talking about the whole mess that happened with Dime and Tommy. And Tommy was trying to explain, like, I wasn't trying to, you know, talk at her out the side of my neck. Many of you guys felt that she was trying to be slick with it. Yeah, whatever, okay. I, look, I ain't up on the nigga tree, obviously. But Tammy was just like, I didn't think you were either. So, you know, you know, maybe Dime just kind of jumped to conclusions, whatever. Tommy thinks that Dime is jealous of her. I don't know why Dime would be jealous of, of Tommy right now. Dime has everything that she seems to want and seems very happy and content where she is. You know, a lot of times people think that whenever you don't like them, it's just automatic that you jealous of them. Bitch, I don't give a fuck about what you got. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got more than you, shit. But uh, that's neither here nor there, child. Now, so Tommy and Tammy get to the party. Samantha there, and honey, I guess Samantha then took a couple of swallow sips on the Henny, on the Crown Royal Vanilla. Y'all had that as good <laughs> so she already on 100 you can tell by the damn music that it's about to be dramatic okay they didn't edit it in this you know this tragic music you know pianos and all of that so they sit down and they have this intervention tammy makes it clear from the beginning tommy girl i didn't know they was gonna do this because i don't need us to have no problems i don't need you trying to whip my ass or nothing samantha starts up she's slurring she already sounds like she's drunk and she's talking about she's hurt because they don't hug and that I'm your mother and I'm always going to be your mother. And Tommy's just looking at her like, well, why are you doing this? Like, why are you having all these people sitting here acting like, you know, you've been doing all that? We don't have that kind of relationship. We've never had that kind of relationship. Samantha goes on and on about how she was 17-year-old mother and, you know, she did the shit that she did for Tommy. And I guess her sibling, she stole for her. And, you know, she stayed away and stayed out for her. And, all. and Tommy was just like, but no, what you're not going to do is blame the shit that you did on me and my brothers and sisters. Because kids want they fucking mama to be home not in jail this whole scene was a good scene to watch if it is indeed true because um you get to see what the you know kids when they little we don't be thinking that they be paying attention that they not affected by shit because they little but they hold on to that shit and it carries up into their adulthood and they be fucked up for a whole bunch of reasons. We are all products of our environment. Okay, so when you saw that whole scene um, of Samantha not taking no responsibility, no accountability for the things that she has done to her kids, this is not about what you did, why you did it. It's only about how you hurt your daughter and how to mend this problem okay so that's why when Tommy was just like I'm leaving I'm not I'm not fixing to be here with this everybody was mad at Samantha because it was like fuck first to fuck all you drunk and we told you not to fucking drink your daughter is not gonna listen to you when you in this because you are irrational you know Deb was pissed okay I lost my boys I lost my kids two of them and that's time you can't never get back so you need to try to fix the shit while you here with them and while they there with you and you know everybody is healthy and get, because once it's done it's done but samantha oh she got a whole bunch of issues and then lastly tommy she realizes that samantha and her need to try to fix this problem so they agree to go to a professional counseling session we see dr sherry i said child i ain't seen dr sherry in a long time honey dr sherry said bitch these bills don't pay themselves i got to, <laughs> she got to get some work even if it is with that mona anyways the counseling session is not going that well because I'm not sure if it was the way it was edited, but it seemed like it was a dumping session from Tommy on Samantha. It is hard to sit in, in, a, in, a, in a counseling session and hear everything, 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 everything be about you. But I was hoping that Samantha would have listened because in this case, you're the mother. So let your daughter get it all out. Let her say what it is. And then you can come back and you can try to say your piece. But the fact that she was just like, I'm not listening to this because it's just everything is me, 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 me. And she just got up and everything. Again, she just does not want to take accountability for what she's done. So she feels like it's pointless. But they get her back in the room and they, they, they have a heart to heart. It's a lot of tears. Samantha does apologize. It was a touching scene. I will, I will admit it was a touching scene. Like I said, I hope the shit is even true and that they not just playing on a bitch emotions. And even if it isn't true, I think the story itself is important because there are many women out there who have 
fractured lives because of their relationship with their mother. And that is so hard for me to understand because I had a great relationship with my mother and I fight hard to have a good relationship with my daughter. So it's hard for me to understand how shit can get like this. So this is why it's good to see because from my comments, it's a lot of you guys out there that have these same issues. It breaks my heart to even know that. So it was a good scene for the show. Hopefully Tommy and Samantha works it out. They said that this is a start, so good for them. And then in closing, you know how they always close out the season. They say that Tammy is concentrating on her singing career. Mimi says she's obsessed with her daughter. And uh, she wants Stevie to leave the fucking monster that is Jocelyn alone. But she's fine with uh, Eva and Bonnie Bella having a relationship. Look, I know we are trying to be nice and all that. But sometimes if you feel like you don't want your daughter to be around the mama, then she can't see the baby either. Okay, Eva going to be fine. Bonnie Bella gonna be fine at this moment. When Bonnie Bella get older, maybe then you guys can. But you, she ain't got to be seeing the baby, what, seven, eight, nine months? Who cares? Carly says that all her businesses are booming. This bitch got more fucking. This is the jack of all trade, master of none. She says her life is good with Caesar. Jock says he's taking a break from all the women and all the drama, and he's fine in this treehouse, child. They carried that shit on the whole fucking season. Stevie J says he doesn't know how shit is gonna play out with the uh, enchilada, empanada, enchurito, impala, elevator, estelita, estralita. He's doing him. And it's all about family. That's all he cares about. He can't worry about Jocelyn right now. Right now, it's family over everything. Uh, Dime, like I said, is happy. She seems happy. Her and her man are shopping for a home. I still will say, Dime, get your man up off this show. If we ain't seen it with one couple, we didn't seen it with 15. Honey, these shows fuck up relationships. I know that he's not working. He doesn't. He's not on the team. So it just seems like it would be easy for him to kind of transition over to the show but don't do it you look too happy you look so content and settled and I, I just hate to see it get fucked up it might take years but trust me it's hard to last up under the strain as D-Lo and Rashida then we see D and Ernest she says she went back and got her man okay and now he's in the house with her so I guess she didn't work it out Tommy says that she and her mama gotta work through the shit that they got um, but that's the first step. But she wants to fix this and she wants to break the chain so that, you know, her relationship with her daughters is not like a cycle and, you know, she doesn't go through that. She wants her daughters to be able to talk to her and that, you know, she will always be there to listen because that's what mothers do. So that was nice for her to say as well. Um, Rashida, she said it's been a bad year, but she's got to face some real truths. She's going to move on with her life, move the dark clouds from over her head. That would be D-Lo, I suppose. But we see her sign the, the, the separation paper. She makes it clear that it's not a divorce. She says it's a step towards healing. And then, like I told you before, Jocelyn, they don't get a last last little confessional with her because they say that she's been cutting up, child. They show all the fights that she's had, her getting smart with production, okay, her being difficult. I don't know what to believe. I think it's a mixture of both of them. I think it's Mona's side, and I think it's jo um, Jocelyn's side. She bought into that, and so we cannot absolve her of all fault i would like i'm gonna just sit back and see how this all plays out for her but something tells me it's not the best idea to get on mona's bad side mona has way more power behind her than jocelyn does but we'll see we'll see all right you guys let me get off of here make sure that you rate comment and subscribe to the channel i'm it's rocks the channel sports rocks everything else i do will be in the bottom bar all right all right so i hope that you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day i plan on doing the same oh ooh, the, the crazy lady back <laughs> until next time rock stars bye